Welcome family, welcome, 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 welcome. Thank you, thank you for coming into my channel. Thank you, welcome, welcome. My name is the Encourager, Queen C, No Longer Bound. And I just want to say thank you, thank you for coming in tonight. If this is your first time here, please make sure that you hit the like button. Make sure that you subscribe. Make sure that you share this video with a family member or friend. Listen, today's video, we are talking about this is how we fight. This is how we fight. Yes, yes, yes. We need to know how to fight as Christians. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for wisdom. We thank you for knowledge. We thank you for understanding. We thank you, Lord God, for giving us strategies on how to fight. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Yes, 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 yes. On how to fight. We need to know how to fight. So we're going to get right into it. So what we're going to do is, uh, you know, we're doing this series, where is that in the Bible? Where is that in the Bible? So we're going to go back and look at some battles that, was, that uh, were won supernaturally in the Bible. We're going to see how they fought supernaturally because we're fighting supernaturally. We're talking about spiritual warfare tonight. This is not anything to do with a gun, knife, or anything like that. This is fighting in the spirit. There are some things that we have to go against in the spirit. Amen. So let's get started. Um, let's look at, we had a battle here. What prophets uh, word caused the Syrian soldiers to be struck blind. So that was a battle going on right there. So let's go there and find out about that battle. And that's going to be, uh, let's go to Second Kings. Let's go to Second Kings. Let's look at this one. Fighting supernaturally. You don't have to lift a finger. Oh my, this is how we fight. This is how we fight. We got to learn this one. Our first one, we're going to go to Second Kings. We're going to Second Kings. Second Kings, Old Testament. Yes, yes, yes. We're going to find out how they did it. And then we're going to go and see how the Lord told us to do it today. Second Kings. Okay. And we're going to go to chapter six. And we're going to verse 18 to 23. Chapter six. We're going to go to verse 18. All right. Start at 18 through 23. Here we go. Let's go with 18. When the Armenians came, or Armenians, Armenians would be better, when the Armenians came down to him, Elisha prayed to the Lord and said, now he prayed, please strike this people, this nation, with blindness. And God struck them with blindness in accordance with Elisha's request. Then Elisha said to the Armenians, this is not the way, nor this the city. Follow me and I will lead you to the man whom you're seeking. And he led them to Samaria. We're going down to verse 23. When they had come into Samaria, Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men so that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes and they saw. Behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. When the king of Israel, Jehoram, saw them, he said to Elisha, my father, shall I kill them? Shall I kill them? Elisha answered, you shall not kill them. Would you kill those you have taken captive with your sword and bow? Serve them bread and water so that they may eat and drink and go back to their master, uh, King Ben-Hadad. So the king prepared a great feast for them. And when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away and they went to their master. And the marauding band of Aram did not come into the land of Israel again. What was happening there? 
It was a battle going on. And Elisha used the supernatural. He prayed to God. He prayed and asked God to fight his battle. The supernatural. We're going to learn that there are times that we don't have to lift our hands to fight. Let's keep going. This was only one battle here. Hallelujah. Oh God, we thank you. This is powerful tonight. This is powerful tonight, whether you're one person or whether you're a family, whether you're an army, whether you're a captain, no matter who you see, we need to seek God for strategies, seek God for wisdom. We just don't jump up and all of a sudden we're running out and we're getting into a fight because we're trying to solve it with our natural. Our, our weapons are not carnal. They're spiritual. We got to fight. This is a, we're in a spiritual battle today. All right, let's go on. Here's the next one. Let's look at what happened here. What nation's army was destroyed in the Red Sea? Now, we know this, but let's not be so quick sometimes, because I think sometimes uh, the way the Lord deals with me, you've heard something a lot so many times. You've heard it over and over and over. Till the, when you hear it, you're kind of like, that. yeah, I, I know that story. I already know all about it. I know what was going on. I'm good. Yeah, but I think each time we read it, we can learn something out of it. And the Holy Spirit can bring something to our mind. He can illuminate. He can enlighten us, enlighten us. Let's go to the book of Exodus. We know it happened in the book of Exodus. And let's go to chapter 14. Chapter 14. And we're going to read, you know, I'm writing these down as I go so I know exactly where I am. Exodus chapter 14. Give me a little tablet down here in pen. Uh, verses 13 through 31, okay? And uh, we're, we're going to Egypt. We're going to Egypt. Exodus chapter 14, verses 13. Let's go to verse 13. We're going to see. We're talking about fighting supernaturally tonight. So it says, Then Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. That's all through the scripture. That's a thread. That's all through the scripture. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Take your stand. Be firm and confident and undismayed and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. See, now we need to see that, which, which he, meaning God, will accomplish for you today. Not that you're going to do it. And even today, he's not even going to do it through them. But he says he's going to accomplish it for you today. He's going to do the fighting. He said, but those Egyptians whom you see, whom you have seen today, you will never see again. Now, in the scriptures, it was the Egyptians, but you could be facing some type of battle in your life right now. It won't be the Egyptians. It could, whatever you're dealing with. I mean, we got all kinds of pillows. We got the we got the mental, we got the physical, we got the spiritual, we got financial. These are major pillows and other things come underneath those. So we're fighting some type of a battle here. I don't know what you're dealing with, but it says here, he, he says, I do not be dismayed, do, do, you know, stand firm, stand confident. In other words, know that your God got this. So he says here, he will accomplish for you today. He said, he said, he said, the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you will never see again. Let's see where we're going. We're going on down. The Lord will fight for you while you only need to. Mm -mm -mm. I'm reading out of the Amplified Version. You only need to keep silent and remain calm. Oh, my Lord. I knew this was a powerful word tonight. Keep silent and remain calm calm. Lord, can we do that? Can we do that in the midst of our battles right now? In what we're dealing with, can we be silent and can we remain calm? My God, my God. Let's go on to verse 15. It said, the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the sons of Israel to move forward toward the sea. As for you, lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. He's telling Moses, you got, 
you got what you need right there in your hand. I've already given you the weapon. I've already given you the tool. Just use it. It's just a staff. But if you, you obey me, you're going to see some you're going to see this staff do something that you thought it did something when it turned into a snake and you picked it back up, but you haven't seen anything yet. You thought it did something when you touched the water and, and it turned to blood. You thought it did something when you stretched it out and the frogs came. You thought it did something with the place, but you haven't seen anything yet. I got something else to show you right here. Just obey me. Trust me. We're going to do a supernatural uh, uh, battle here. We've been fighting the supernatural. Oh my God. It says, as for me, hear this. Uh, let me go back. He said, as for you, lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it so that the sons of Israel may go through the middle of the sea on dry land. He said they're going to go through on dry land. Now, I've watched the movies before, and they have them plopping in the water that's over the ankle and almost up the middle of the lake. God never did that. How in the world he can have the power to divide the sea, and he can't dry it up? <laughs> he can't dry up the bottom. I mean, they, I mean, that's movies, right? That's movies. So, he says here, they would go over on dry land. He said, dry land. As for me, hear this. I will hearten the hearts of the Egyptians, and they will go in uh, into the sea after them. He was just going to make them just continue to want to fight and fight, and they weren't going to give up. They were going to follow them right on in there. And he's saying, they will go into the sea after them, and I will be glorified and honored through Pharaoh and all of his army and his war chariots and his horsemen. And the Egyptian... Uh, and, and, his army, and the Egyptians shall know without any doubt and acknowledge that I am the Lord when I am glorified and honored through Pharaoh, through his war chariots and his charioteers. They're going to know that God is God. We got to go on a little farther. The angel of God who had been going in front of the camp of Israel. See, I mean, this God has got this thing. Oh, my God. He's got an angel going in front of them. <laughs> He's telling his servant Moses what to do with the rod. He's saying to these people, just keep your mouth shut and just watch me work. Oh, my God. He says, here, in front of the camp and moved and went behind them. So now the angel is in front. Now he's, he, he doesn't have to, because Moses is going to be in front. Now the angel is, is going to get in the back. Oh my God. God's got our front and he's got our back. He's got us on both sides. Oh, hallelujah. He said, move. He said, the pillar of cloud moved from in front and stood behind them. So it came between the camp of Egypt and the camp of Israel. So in other words, when we're worth God, <laughs> oh my God. So have you ever really taken time to see the strategy that God has used here? Or do we just quickly run over and just say, yeah, that's what's happening, we're done. Look at this, look at this, will you? He said, so it came between the camp of Egypt and the camp of Israel. So now God has positioned himself in between the enemy and you. Mmm, hallelujah. Mmm. Man, I could get up and run around the room and shout. <laughs> Do we see this? He said, it was a cloud alone with darkness, even by day to the Egyptians, but it gave light by night to the Israelites. There was a cloud there, and a cloud. I got to read it one more time. I got to read it. Okay, I got to read it. Let me slow down. Calm down. Calm down. All right. So it came. The pillow of cloud moved from in front and stood behind them. So it came between the camp of of Egypt and the camp of Israel. It was a cloud along with darkness. You know, real dark cloud like a real bad storm is about to happen. It said, but even by day to the Egyptians, it was dark. But it gave light by night to the Israelites. So one army did not come near the other all night. So, 
<laughs> Can we do a clap? Can we do a clap? Can we give God a praise? Can we give him a praise? Can we just give him a praise? Okay. <laughs> the cloud moves in the back and get in between the army, in between the enemy and the... <laughs> now, it's providing light for these people over here that they can see. But for the enemy, it's dark. So therefore, they can't see and they just have to go to bed or whatever the case may be. But in their minds, I, I'm sure they're thinking it's dark everywhere. But it's not. Oh my God. What a God we serve. What a mighty God. What an awesome God we serve. Can you see this? Let's go on. I'm, I, I love the Lord. I get excited. Okay, I get excited. He says it. All right. Okay, then, I'm at verse 21. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. We're talking about supernatural fighting. We're talking about this is how we fight, supernaturally. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea back by a strong east wind all that night and turned the seabed into dry land, and the waters were divided. All night long, God is battling this thing. He's doing it. The Israelites went into the middle of the sea on dry land. I, want, I got to make you, I got to help you see. It's dry land. Please don't let the movie, the Ten Commandments and all those things that uh, they're trying to dumb God down. It's, it's not, it's not, it's not. He said dry land, D-R-Y, dry, dry land. He said, and the waters divided. He said, the Israelites went into the middle of the sea on dry land, and the waters formed a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Then the Egyptians, now they are, they are ready to come and get them. I'll tell you if he opened that up. You know something? I truly see that uh, God had to harden their hearts. He had to harden their hearts that they would just continue to pursue them. Because I'm trying to say there's nobody in their right mind would turn around and see a sea divide. Stand up on the right side, stand up on the left side and put dry land in the middle. See some people walk across this sea on dry land and you're gonna go after them. So it had to be that God hardened their hearts. There's no question here, okay? Then the Egyptians pursued them into the middle of the sea. Even all Pharaoh's horses, his war chariots and his chariots. So it happened at the early morning watch before dawn that the Lord looked down on the army of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and cloud and put them in a state of confusion. Now they are coming after them with all their might. And all of a sudden now there's fire there and they are confused. They don't know what to do. The animals and everything just don't know where to go and what to do, right? He made their chariots wheel wheels hard to turn. They wouldn't hardly go. God is fighting. This is a supernatural battle. These people are not doing anything. The Israelites are being quiet and trying to walk across the bottom of the sea on dry land. God is, oh, God is fighting. My God, my God, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He made their chariot wheels hard to turn and the chariots difficult to drive. So the Egyptians said, let us flee from Israel, for the Lord is fighting for them against the Egyptians. They even had to admit, this is not man doing this. This is supernatural. There's no man doing this, y'all. This is supernatural. They even admit, he said, let us flee, let's get out of here. For it's the Lord that is fighting for them against the Egyptians. Oh, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. We got to go down to verse 31. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm just excited. If we don't get through all the ones I had planned tonight, that's all right with me. The Holy Ghost, just have your way in Jesus' name. Just have your way, Lord. Here we go. Verse 26. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may come back over the Egyptians. So now they're in there. He's going to close them in. He said, on this war chariots, on their war chariots and their charities, so on the chariots themselves, everything, the horse, everything, everything in there, okay? So he says, so Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its normal flow, excuse me, at sunrise. 
The Egyptians retreated right into it, being met by the returning water. It was whoosh. Oh my goodness, I think they got that part right in the movie. He said, the waters returned and covered the chariots and the charioteers and all of the army of Pharaoh that had gone into the sea after them. Not even one of them survived. But the Israelites walked on dry land in the middle of the sea and the waters formed a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. The Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore. When Israel saw the great power which the Lord had used against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord. Meaning they, they, they really, oh my God, what kind of God is this we are serving? They reverenced him. They awed him. They respected him. They were like, oh my, oh, this is a God. We got a powerful God. Look at our God. He said, and they believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the wonderful name of Jesus. We're talking about fighting supernaturally. This is no gun. This is no AK-40 or so whatever people are using in bullets and pistols and knives. And No, 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 no. We're on another plane. We're on another plane. We're in the supernatural. Hallelujah. Let's get another battle. Let's get another battle. Yeah, yeah. So now that was, you know where that was found? That was found in Exodus chapter 14, verses 13 to 31. So now we're going to... Stay in Exodus, and we're going to go to um, chapter 17, verse 11. Chapter 17, verse 11. We're going to another battle. We're going to another battle. Okay. This one was, the, was Amalek. Amalek. So let's go. Exodus, chapter 17. Supernatural. Supernatural. We're learning how to fight supernatural. We've been battling it all the wrong way. We've been fighting even COVID and all diseases and I don't care what it is. We've been fighting it the wrong way. We got to fight in the supernatural. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Let's look. Let's go down to verse 11. Verse 11 here. Let's see what's happening, what Moses is doing. All right. Now when Moses held up his hand, still talking about that. Israel prevailed, and when he lowered his hand due to the fatigue, Amalek prevailed. Now, this is another battle, all right? This is another battle that Moses was in the Israelites were fighting. And so Moses now, uh, getting tired, let's read a little more down to 12. He said, but Moses' hands were heavy, and he grew tired. So he had to, the Lord had him, as long as his hands was up, up up like this, okay? I can't do it for the video, you see it all, but you know what I mean, his hands were up. As long as they were up, they were winning. But if, if you just do it on your own, just just do this and just keep it there maybe for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, then you go and try to do it for an hour, maybe two hours, three hours, however long the battle is going and your hand is just up like that. Your arms start to feel like they're lead, man. They just start to hurt. You go like, whoa. Ooh, can I put my arms down? Boy, they just begin to hurt. They, they, they ache. They begin to ache. So what had to happen was Moses had what they call armor bearers. And so they had to come and hold his arms up because it wasn't anybody's arms. It was only Moses' arms, the servant of God that had to be up in order for them to win. So let's read a little bit more. It says, but Moses' hands were heavy and grew tired. So they took a stone mm, and put it under him, and he sat on it. Then Aaron and her, you heard him love her, being her, her held up his hands on uh, uh, one on one side and one on the other side so that it was so that it was that his hands were steady 
until sunset. They fought until sunset. Can you imagine his hands being up that long? They had to hold them up. They had to support them. So Joshua overwhelmed and defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Joshua was out there this time fighting with a sword. It was a physical sword he was fighting with. But God was also fighting using Moses. Joshua was fighting physically with his army. But God was doing the supernatural. He said, Moses, as long as your arms stay up, they're going to win. When they come down, that's, that's it. You better keep them up. And Moses had to keep them up there, and he couldn't do it. So they had to help him teamwork. They came in and did some teamwork. No, we keeping these arms up here. So this battle can be won. It was won supernaturally. This is how we fight. This is how we fight. And when we see these things here, we're going to not understand them because they seem like they're, who does that? Who sits somewhere with their hands up talking about somebody's going to win a battle? Who does that? Who talks about somebody going to open up a Red Sea and somebody going to walk across on dry land? Who does that? But that's not even, that makes no common sense. That makes no natural sense. That's why supernatural. On another plane. On another plane. Hallelujah. We give God praise. Okay, let's get another battle. Let's get another battle. Let's get another battle. Let's go now to Joshua. And let's go to chapter 10. And we're going to read verses 6 through 13. Oh, we're learning how to fight tonight. We're learning how to fight tonight. We're going to be, oh my God, let's go see what was happening. Joshua uh, chapter 10. So where is that found with Joshua in this battle? Where is that found with our, our first battle with Elijah? That was in uh, 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 18 to 23. Uh, our second battle with the Egyptians, that was in Exodus chapter 14, verses 13 through 31. And then uh, the battle with Am Amalek, with uh, Amalek, that was in Exodus chapter 17, verse 11. So now we're going to the battle with Joshua is in, Joshua chapter 10, verses 6 to 13. Joshua chapter 10, okay? Still in the Old Testament. These are Old Testament battles, supernaturally fighting, supernaturally. Let's go to Joshua chapter 10. And let's go to verses 6 through 13. Let's go start at verse 6. Start at verse 6. All right. Here's another battle. Supernatural. So the men of Gibeon sent word to Joshua at the camp of Gilgad, saying, Do not abandon your servants. Come up to us quickly and save us and help us for all Five of the kings of the Amorites who live in the hill country have assembled against us. Now they got five armies coming against them, five kings. Hallelujah. So Joshua went up from Gilgad and he and all the people of war with him and all the men of Valor. The Lord said to Joshua, here we go, here we go, supernatural, supernatural. The Lord said to Joshua, do not fear them. The Lord always said, I mean, all through the scriptures, what do you hear? There's a common thread. Fear not. Fear not. Do not fear them. Fear not. Do not fear them. I say to you tonight, fear not. Do not fear them. Hallelujah. He said, do not fear them because I, meaning God, I have given them into your hands. I've already won this battle for you. Don't you even get up. I've already won this battle. Oh my God, my God. Don't even fear. I've already gone before. I've won the battle. He says here, do not fear them because I have given them into your hand. Not one of them shall stand before you. Oh my goodness. We got to go on down to verse 13. That's 9 to verse 9. So Joshua came upon them suddenly, surprising them by marching uphill all night from Gilgad. And 
the Lord caused them to panic and be confused before Israel. Now remember, God is fighting this for them. And he struck them dead in a great slaughter at Gibeon and chased them along the way that goes up to Beth Haran and struck them as far as Ezekiah as, as and Makeda, in Makeda. As they fled before Israel, while they were at the descent of Beth Haran, the Lord threw down large stones of hail. Okay, now God is fighting supernaturally. You say, but well, that's unfair. No, it's not. He's our Lord. He's our Savior. He's our protector. He's our battle. He fights for us. He fights for us. That's, he, he's our, oh, hallelujah. He's our man of war. We don't need to be running around doing things, trying to solve things on our own trying to go out and fight every battle, trying to run over here and fight here and run over here and fight. We're no match for the devil. The devil can have us run over here, putting out a fire over here, and he's got another one over there. We don't know how to fight that. The devil fights in the spiritual realm. So we got to fight in the spiritual realm. That's what is happening here. We're seeing some examples from the Old Testament. They had to fight and they had to go to a spiritual level. They had to move higher than themselves. They had to go to God. They had to go to God for this battle. Okay, the Lord stepped in. He said, I already want it for you. So here's what's going to happen. He said, the Lord threw down large stones of hail from heaven on them as far as Ezekiah, and they died. Do you know how powerful hail is? I've seen little itty bitty balls of hail, and I've seen hail big as my fist. I've seen hail fall. Hail can, can do some damage. I don't know if it's big as my fist. I know it's big, but they hurt it when it hit me. <laughs> I know that. But there's been big balls of hail. You see it on TV and the weather channel or whatever. Hail can hurt. It says here, and it hurted them too, because it says here, uh, from, it came from heaven and they died. It said, more Amorites died because of the hailstones than those whom the sons of Israel had killed with the sword. More died with the hailstones. More died from getting hit on the head or wherever they did with those stones. So are we glorying in death? No, what we're glorying in is that God is the one that fights our battles. Whether we're on the battlefield, whether we're fighting it mentally, whether we're fighting it spiritually. You say, how mentally? The enemy, he, Jesus set the demons free. He cast the demons out. Remember? Out of that guy, that, that lunatic that was having trouble in his, his mind, and, and the evil spirits was tormenting him and throwing him back and forth. He cast the spirit out. He set him free. He fought the battle for him because he couldn't fight it himself. The thing was throwing him all about and having him rip himself up and tear his clothes off and do, do things. He couldn't do it. But Jesus set him free. He fought that battle for him. Yes. Hallelujah. All right. All right. We're still in the Old Testament now. We're still in the Old Testament. Oh, glory be God. Let's see if we get a couple more. Let's see what we can do. If we don't get them all, good. I mean, we had a total of 10. We don't get them all. That's not what it's about. This so we let the Holy Spirit lead us, and we get the, the 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 message out of this. On this is how we fight, and we go say, where is that in the Bible? And we're showing you right here. All right. So that was with hailstones. That was Joshua. Let's look at let's look at number five. Let's go to Second Kings, uh, chapter nineteen. Okay. Excuse me. 2 Kings chapter 19, 2 Kings chapter 19, and then let's go to uh, verse 35, 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 35, 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 30, verse 35, and it's coming up. Yep, 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 29, 32, 33, 35, right here. 33, 35, right here. Yes. Okay, and guys, again, I'm using my tablet right here. This is what I'm using right here. Okay. Then it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went forth and struck down 185,000 men in the camp of the Assyrians, when the survivors got up early in the morning, behold, all 185,000 of them were dead. Now we're going to read, um, I mean, I didn't tell you how far we were reading. So we're, gonna, we're reading in chapter 19, 
And we're going to read um, verse 35. That's where we're going. We only have that one verse. We might do another one to see if we get the understanding. Okay. And all uh, of them were dead. Let's go on down to, let's see here. Let's get, let's go back to, let's go back up a little bit. Let's go back up to 32. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, he will not come to this city, Jerusalem, nor shoot an arrow there, nor will he come before it with a shield, nor throw up a siege ramp against it. By the way that he came by the same way, return, and he will not come into this city, declares the Lord. For I will protect this city to save it for my own sake. And for my servant David's sake, this is what was happening here. So this, when the Lord fought the battle, he said, Then it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went forth and struck down. He was struck, he struck them down. They didn't even get to come in there. He said, they won't come in there. Let's go to 36. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, left and returned home and lived at uh, Nineveh. It came about as he was worshiping in the house of Nishwash, his God, that his son Adramelech and Sherezaz killed him with a sword, and they escaped to the land of Ararat. My God. So even though he was a king and his army was slaughtered and he thought he had gotten away, he still didn't make it. God said they weren't coming in there. God said he was going to protect that city for, for himself and for his servant David, and that's what he did. So God fought that battle. It was a supernatural battle, completely supernatural. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That was the Assyrians. That was the Assyrians. My, 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 my. We're talking about supernatural fighting. How do we fight our battles? Because we need to seek God for wisdom in this day and time. Because there's a lot of stuff going on. The enemy is raging himself and things are spreading out. We don't know how they're going to fight politically. We don't know how they're going to fight. We have no idea how to fight. But we can fight supernaturally. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. We're going to go over and show you how God told us to fight today supernaturally. Yes. Let's get another one. Let's get another one. Let's go to um, 1 Samuel. Let's go to 1 Samuel. And you say, well, this don't make sense. It's not supposed to make sense because it's supernatural. The Bible says that the, the, the spirits of things of God, it, 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 they don't make sense to the natural mind because we can't comprehend. We can't figure out the supernatural. The only way we can do that is by seeking God and, and getting to know him and getting to understand him, getting to understand how he works, getting to understand who he is through his word. And that's what we're doing tonight. We're beginning to see how he fought for them. In the same way he fought for them, he'll fight for us. Oh, hallelujah. Let's go here. 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 10. And we're going to talk about thunder. Something, there was thunder from heaven. Let's go see what's happening there. Some kind of thunder. Something was happening. 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 7. Thunder. Some thunder going on. Oh my God, my God. First Samuel chapter 7. And then we're going, guys, we don't have to have any bells and whistles. The Word of God is strong enough all by itself. I like to have sometimes a little background music, and I don't do that anymore because of copyright. It's just best that I don't even do it. And, and uh, have my little clap or whatever. We don't have to have, the Word of God is all, it's good enough all by itself. Excuse me, all by itself. I, I can play guitar, I can sing, play keyboard, that's not, it's good enough all by itself. I mean, this is powerful here tonight. This is powerful. Mm. We're learning how to fight. And notice where it is for somebody other than me. All right. So 1 Samuel chapter 7. Let's go to verse 10. Let's go to verse 10. Let's see what's happening. As Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines, the Philistines, approached for the battle against Israel. Then the Lord thundered with a great voice that day against the Philistines and threw them into confusion. And they were defeated and fled before Israel. Oh my God. 
They didn't even have to fight. There was nothing going on there. The Lord just took care of that. He just thundered. He just spoke from heaven, just thundered. The Lord can do that even with earthquakes, natural disasters. We see how he did with the plagues in the Old Testament. And today we got earthquakes, we got all kinds of things that are going on. We don't know why I'm not saying God is passing judgment on us and winning wars. But I am saying that God can. He's the creator. He controls the floods. Why do you think the world hasn't just been overflowed by now? Even though all the storms come and all the, the floodings that we have everywhere, yet somehow it seems to subside and we keep on living. Yes, sometimes some lives are lost and some things are gone, but we just keep on living. We keep on building. The earth is still here. The sea hasn't come in and overtaken us. All these type of things. It lightning and it thunders and some folks get hit by lightning, some not, but we still manage, we still make it. He's in charge. He's in control. It's a supernatural thing. God is supernatural. He's a spirit being. And we, in turn, are spirit beings. And once we realize which spirit we're connected to, then we're able to flow like these men and women did in the scriptures here. So far it's just been the men, how they did in the scriptures here. Because they were able to hear God, and they were able to communicate with God, and they were able to move with God. When he say move, they would move. When he say stay, they would stay. Hold up your hands, they would do that. Be quiet, they would do that. They would, they would let him fight for them. That's how they fought, by letting God fight for them. Where is that in the Bible? It's right here. I've given you scripture after scripture. All right. All right. So let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Speaking of earthquake, let's go to uh, stay in 1 Samuel now and go to chapter 14. Stay in 1 Samuel and go to chapter 14. First Samuel chapter 14, and I want you to read verses 11. All right, 11 through 15, let's go there. First Samuel chapter 14, writing them down here, verses 11 through 15. All right, let's see what's happening here with this earthquake. Okay, so verse 11, here we go. When both of them revealed themselves to the garrison of the Philistines, the Philistines said, Look, the Hebrews are coming out of the holes where they have hidden themselves. So the men of the garrison responded to Jonathan and his armor bearer, Come up to us and we will tell you something. Jonathan said to his armor bearer, Climb up after me, for the Lord has given them into the hands of Israel, climb up after me, for the Lord has given. He's prophesying, he's declaring, it. he's just speaking it forth, it's already done, it's already done. It's already done. Then Jonathan, who was Saul's son, then Jonathan, King Saul, climbed up on his hands and feet. You know how you climb up the hill and you're looking over. Amen. His armor bearer following after him. The enemy fell before Jonathan in combat, and his armor bearer Killed some of them after him. That first slaughter, which Jonathan and his armor bearer made, was about 20 men within about a half a plow furrow uh, in a plot of land, the area of which a yoke of oxen would plow in a day. So it was a pretty big that a yoke of oxen would plow in a day. It's almost like a field. I, I'm not good at saying acres or acreage or whatever the case may be. It was, a, it, was a, it was a big gulf, okay? And there was trembling in the Philistine camp and in the field and among all the people, even the garrison and the raiding party trembled in fear and the earth quaked and it became a trembling and terror from God. There was an earthquake going on. There was a shaking going on right then and there in that whole, it said, it said it was a field about where uh, um, the oxen 
would plow in a day. So in a day's time, after I can remember on the farm, they used to plow, I don't know, quite a bit, because they would go up and down and up and down and up and down. Yeah, and they would just be plowing that area. And so that thing being in shake. There was a trembling and a shaking going on. There was a fight going on. There was a battle fighting right there. But they weren't doing it. God was fighting the battle for them. You heard what Jonathan said. He was already saying, they've been given into our hands. We got this. We already got this. You might have to just go and maybe swipe one or two. We got this. God has already won this battle for us. They already declared that. He spoke that forth. Hallelujah. Are we getting this? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Can we do? Can we do? I think we can. Let's go to uh, 2 Kings. I'm so excited. Oh, my God. I hate to get into it. I get into it and I can't finish. Let's go to 2 Kings. Let's go to chapter 7. And let's go to verses 6 through 7. And we're going to see some thundering going on. Quickly, let's go to 2 Kings. 2 Kings. Oh my God, this, oh my God, I'm just loving the word, I'm loving the word. Chapter 7, verses 6 through 7. Verse 6. For the Lord has caused the Armenian army to hear the sound of chariots. Now wait a minute, there, he didn't say you see them, he said to hear, to hear the sound of chariots. And the sound of horses, the sound of a great army. They had said to one another, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come and fight against us. Let's go on verse 7. So the Armenians set out and fled during the twilight. They got out of there and left their tents their horses, they left their donkeys, and even left the camp just as it was and fled for their lives. <laughs> they didn't see them. They didn't see them. They didn't see these armies. They didn't see these chariots. They didn't see anything. It said that for the Lord has had caused the Armenian army to hear the sound of chariots, to hear the sound of horses, to hear the sound of a great army. <laughs> but they didn't see these horses, chariots, nor great armies. And then all of a sudden they assumed in their mind when they heard this, that they had gotten together some kings to come and fight for them. He said, oh my God, they, they done hired some kings. They done hired the Hittites, and they done hired the Egyptians. They're all going to come together. We got to get out of here. <laughs> and the enemy had to flee. We submit ourselves to God, resist the devil, and he has to flee. In the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> okay. Where is that? Oh, okay. Okay. Oh my God. Oh my God. I don't. I, don't, I think. Mm, I don't know. I'll we'll try one more. Let's look at one more. Let's go to uh, Second Chronicles chapter thirteen, uh, verses fifteen to sixteen. Okay. Second Chronicles chapter thirteen. Let's go to verses fifteen through sixteen. Second Chronicles. Okay. Uh, Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles. Here we go. Let's go to. Chapter 13, chapter 13, and then let's go to verse 15. Whoa, come on time, verse 15, verse 15. Oh my God, it gets so good, time get to flying. Verse 15 and 16. Then the men of Judah raised a war cry. Now that, I, that's Judah, all right. And as they shouted, God struck Jeroboam and all Israel with defeat before Ab um, Abijah and Judah. And the sons of Israel fled before Judah, and God handed over 
the sons of Israel to them. What happened? It said the men of Judah raised a war cry. See, sometimes in church, we don't even want to open our mouth with praise. Judah means praise. We don't want to praise. We're afraid that, that the enemy will hear us. We want them to hear us. Do you see what happened here? They raised a war cry. And as they shouted, God struck. This is how we fight in the supernatural. You say, where is that? Second Chronicles chapter 13, verses 15 and 16. This is how we fight in the supernatural. We got to open our mouths. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah. The last one we're going to do is Je Jehoshaphat. Let's go to Second Chronicles, same thing. And let's go to chapter 20. And let's go to verse 22. Let's go to Second Chronicles. We're already there. Let's go to chapter 20. Oh, my God. This is how we fight in the supernatural. Come on, Jesus. Chapter 20. Oh, when you really need something from God, you got to call out. They said, well, why you got to do all that? I don't know. I know we're fighting in the supernatural. And I just know that if it works, I'm going to do it. Second Chronicles chapter 20, go to verse 22. When they began singing and praising the Lord, set ambushes against the sons of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah. So they were struck down in defeat. Mm -mm 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 -mm. What was the, how, how did they fight? They went running after them. They went poking them. They went shooting them. They went doing things with them. They went cursing after them. They went swearing after them. They went doing, it says, it says right here, when they began singing and praising, the Lord set ambushes against the enemy. Oh, if we would just grab hold if we would just learn from this. Now let's quickly, we're going to close. Let's go to the New Testament now. And we're going to close with Ephesians. I know you already know it. And we're going to go to chapter 6. And we're going to verse 10. You already know it. You Bible scholars, you already know it. And now we're going to see how we fight today. We do what Judah just did. We open our mouths. Well, let's go here real quick. In conclusion, the Apostle Paul is saying, be strong in the Lord, draw your strength from him and be empowered through your union with him and in the power of his boundless might. Put on the full armor of God, for his precepts are like the splendor of armor of a heavily armed soldier, so that you may be able to successfully stand up against all the schemes and the strategies and the deceits of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood. But our struggle is not against people. He said, contending only with the physical opponents, that's not our struggle. He said, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of weakness in heavenly, uh, supernatural, supernatural, supernatural places. Therefore, put on the complete armor of God so that you will be able to successfully resist, resist and stand your ground in the evil day of danger and having done everything that the crisis demands to stand firm in your place, fully prepared, immovable, victorious. So stand firm and hold your ground, having tightened the wide band of truth, personal integrity and moral courage around your waist and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and upright heart and having strapped on your feet the gospel of peace in the preparation to face the enemy with the firm footed stability and the readiness produced by the good news, by the word of God. 
above all, lift up the protective shield of faith and with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And with all prayer and petition, pray with the specific requests at all times, on every occasion, and in every season, and in the spirit. And with this in view, stay alert with all perseverance and petition, interceding in prayer for all God's people. And then he says, and pray for me. And I end with that, and pray for me. Hallelujah, let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this word tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that we are learning this is how we fight. God, let us go back. Let us listen. Let us seek you. Let us tune our ear into you to get to know this is how we fight. We're in a spiritual warfare, Lord, all across the land, in the north, in the south, in the east, in the west. Lord, it's racial. Lord, it's political. Lord, it's physical. Lord, it's spiritual. Lord, it's financial. Lord, there's battles, 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 battles. But, oh God, if you did it for them in the days of old, you can do it for us now. Oh God, we come to you, Father God. We come to you, Lord God. Help us, Lord, open our ears, open our eyes, open, Lord God, our minds, that we can hear what thou saith the Lord. And not only do we hear it, O oh God, but we will obey what you tell us to do. These men of God, they obeyed, and Lord God, they were victorious. God, Apostle Paul has given us an a, a outline here on how to get dressed and how to battle. We thank you for it right now, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. This is how we fight in the supernatural. Where is that in the Bible? We got all the scriptures here. And I will even put them in the uh, description box so you can find them again. God bless you tonight. Thank you so much for coming. We appreciate you. And we're going to see you right here in our next video.